Victory. If today is your first time visiting, we want to welcome you. Please take a moment to fill out the first time visitor card in the seat back in front of you and return it after service as you leave to our first time visitors lounge and pick up a free gift. If we can do anything to help you out, just let one of our amazing team members know. We're glad you chose Heritage this morning and we look forward to seeing you again. Next Level Men, our next meeting is coming up on Thursday, April 4th at 7 p.m. Ladies, next month is our bi-monthly outreach on April 1st at 5.30 p.m. Our Chariots of Light meet this Tuesday on March 12th at 7 p.m. followed by our weekend ride. Young adults, if you're between the ages of 18 to 30 something, meet us at the church this Saturday at 9.30 a.m. for a day outdoors. Visit our events page for more details. What's up youth? If you're in grades six through 12, join us for service this Wednesday at 7 p.m. and for our rec nights every third Sunday while the parents are at Thrive Groups. Thrive Group Night is coming up Sunday, March 17th at 5.30 p.m. To know more on these events and others, visit us at heritageoffaith.com forward slash events. Good morning, Heritage. How is everybody? You're here. You're not late. We have lots of love for those who come in at 10, right? Yes. Glory to God. Well, the worship team, man, we had a time already this morning. So we are going to grab and lock arms with you and say, come with us. Amen. But I had this going on in my spirit. And this scripture is one of Dr. Savell's key scriptures in his ministry. And it was one of Rick's and mine when we did sports ministry, really any ministry that we've done. But I want to read it to you in the Passion Translation, right? So this is 1 John 5, 4. You see, every child of God overcomes the world. Say, I am a child of God. I'm a child of God. Okay, say, even like with strength. I am a child of God. Child. Yes. Every child of God overcomes the world. For our faith is the victorious power that triumphs over the world. Our faith, heritage of faith, right? We have faith in us. He's given every, each and every one of us the measure of faith, amen? So who are the world conquerors defeating its power? Those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? And guess what, we've got power, amen? It's given to us by the blood of Jesus. And it is his name. Say Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's just worship him. Let's praise him. Amen. Let's give honor to whom honor is due this morning. Glory to God. There is power. In the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. <laughs> there is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, it is. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Yes, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, it is. There is power in the name of Jesus. <laughs> there is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, 
break every chain, break every chain, yes, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. <laughs> There's an army rising up, yes. There's an army.
Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. If you believe that today, come on, worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Your deliverance is in your praise this morning. <laughs> your deliverance is in your praise this morning. It can't have a
This is what we say to the spirit of hopelessness. take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ in this house today. We cast down any wicked thought or imagination that would try to exalt itself against the knowledge of our God. And we say, hopelessness, shut your mouth in Jesus' name. Doubt, shut your mouth in Jesus' name. You have no place in a child of God. Just begin to worship him. As we move into the word, just begin to worship him right now. If that was you, if you were feeling hopeless when you came in, I believe you're feeling victorious when you leave. God has opened your heart up. You have allowed him to open your heart up and worship and praise, and he's going to pour the uncompromised word of the living God. And you are going to leave here victorious. I speak that over each and every soul in this place. He's not going to leave one person out this morning. Each one here in the sound of my voice will leave here more than a conqueror, knowing your place, more than victorious, encouraged and strengthened. Amen? Empowered by your King. Hallelujah. So just worship him as we move into the word, worship him. This is not, you worship him with your attention. You worship him with your open ears to hear. Worship doesn't stop because the music stops, amen? It's just gotten started. Real worship happens when the word of God comes forth and you receive it, amen? So lift your hands one more time and just thank God in your own words. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for the word that you have for me. Thank you, Father, for the food that you've prepared for me on the, this table today. I will feast. I will feast on your word. I will feast on your presence. And in the name of Jesus, I will leave completely and radically changed by your victorious power. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In John chapter 16, verse 26, he says, At that time, you will ask in my name. 
And I, he says, I'm not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for it will be unnecessary. For the Father himself tenderly loves you. Tenderly loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came out from the Father. A few verses later, he says, I've told you these things so that in me, so that in me you may have perfect peace yes. and confidence. In the world you'll have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration, but be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident, certain, and undaunted, for I overcome the world. I have deprived its power to harm you and have conquered it for you. It says, in me you'll have perfect peace. In me you'll have perfect peace. In me you'll have perfect peace. Can you turn me down? In me you'll have perfect peace. So you won't have to ask, and you ask in my name, but I'm not going to go to the Father for you because the Father loves you. The Father loves you. Just make sure you keep your focus on the right thing. Keep your focus on Jesus. In me, you'll have perfect peace. Uh, Father, we just open our hearts up to the word this morning, and we just thank you for perfect peace that comes when we keep our eyes on your word and we keep our eyes on Jesus. Thank you for having your way today. Thank you for having your, your way today in our lives. And we declare that this is a year of marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of our God. And we declare, and we declare that this year will be marked by great victories. Great victories. Great victories because of your name. Great victories because of Jesus. Great victories. For, yes, in the world, yes, we'll have tribulations, but be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. He said, I have already overcome the world. Oh, so Father, our eyes are upward. Our eyes are focused on you. So Father, we just thank you for having your way. And we welcome your presence and power that changes things. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, go ahead and greet one another and welcome the Heritage of Faith. And tell them good to see them this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll receive our tithes and offerings at the end. But I want to go ahead and get into the Word um, just because I just believe just what the Holy Spirit's doing and moving in a place and, um, and, and just believe that, that we're going to continue to build on what the Lord wants us to receive this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Isaiah chapter 12. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 12. And this morning I'm kind of... In between two series, uh, I'm uh, finishing out, you know, my victory, and we're just going to continue to build on that, and I'm just going to, and I'm going to go into another series that all just kind of builds on one on the other, one thing on the other, and uh, we've been talking about my victory, I believe this is the eighth, eighth week I've been talking about this, and I'm transitioning into a series called In, In the Name, In the Name. And so over my time with you, over, over the coming, coming weeks, we'll be talking about in the name. In the name. There's victory in the name. Yes. Marvels, wonders, extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of our God are going to manifest based on his name, based on his nature, based on his character. And so let's read this this morning, Isaiah chapter 12, and this has been a key scriptures that we've been talking about, that I've been talking about the last eight times dealing with this. But in Isaiah 12, actually, actually let's look at verse, uh, Isaiah 11, verse 16. He says, And there shall be a highway from Assyria for the remnant left of his people, as there was for Israel when they came up out of the land of Egypt. Say, out of the land of Egypt. Now, what does Egypt represent? We know it represents bondage. We know it can represent fear. It, can, it represents the curse. It represents anything and everything that the enemy would want to bind God's people with, right? So here it says, and there shall be a highway from Assyria for the remnant left of his people as there was for Israel when they came out. Meaning just as now, now it, God's people are in bondage to the Assyrians, so just as Egypt was let out, of, let out of bondage. I'm going to let God's people out of the bondage of the Syrians. 
You, you, have to, you have to understand something that when we talk about the name and we talk about victory in the name, you have to understand that this all is based on his nature and based on his character. So immediately after that, he says in, in chapter 12, it says, and in that day, you will say, I will give thanks to you, O Lord. For though you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you comfort me. Are you grateful for that? Amen. Are you grateful that through Jesus, yes. through, he poured his wrath out on Jesus and he turned and he looked at us and yet he comforted us? Yes. Amen. Next verse says, behold, God, my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord God is my strength and he's my song. He's my str The Lord Jehovah, he goes, I will trust and not be afraid. So you have to make a decision that if you're going through challenges in life, you have to make a decision. Are you going to trust? Or are you going to be afraid? And he goes, I will trust and not be afraid. Why will he trust? Because he said, Lord, my God, my Jehovah, the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He is my strength and he's my song. And how do we define that word song? He's the object of my praise. And because he's the object of my praise, he's what? He's become my victory, right? Because he's the object of my praise, he's become my victory. So when we were singing that song, in the, there, there's power in the name of Jesus. What are we saying? Hey, the, he's the object of my praise. He's the object of my praise. Yes, right now I might be going through a challenge. Right now, yes, I might feel alone. I might feel hopeless. I might feel broken. But you know what? There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. We, we have to allow our Christianity to become, become something beyond just an idea. We have to allow our Christianity to become something that just, is, becomes, just becomes normal in our lives. It, it has to be beyond just the, a concept of just, just, just someone dying for us and we go to a building somehow. No, it has to become a living revelation that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And realize that the heart of God is for us to operate and walk in complete freedom, to walk in complete victory, to walk in complete prosperity, to walk in complete healing, to walk in total freedom in every area of our lives. So when you're going through things, it's, it's not about complaining about the problem, complaining about the situation, but keeping him as the object of our praise. And then he goes and says this, and in that day that will say, Give thanks to the Lord. Actually, this verse three says, therefore with joy will you draw waters from the wells of salvation. And in that day, you will say, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his what? Name. Call upon his name. Call upon his name. And by means of his name, this is the Amplified, and by means of his name, Declare and make known his deeds among the people of the earth and proclaim that his name is exalted. And proclaim that his name is exalted. In that day, in that day, talking about him making a highway, just as he did, a way of escape, just like he did for the God's people out of Egypt. In that day, declare his deeds among the people and declare that his name is exalted. Father, I thank you for the word this morning. And we declare that your name is exalted in this place. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness in our lives. And I thank you that you reveal your word to us today. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. That his name is exalted. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Now, the word exalted means to lift up high. It means to bring into a place that's inaccessible. Declare. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Without turning there, Proverbs chapter 18, 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Proverbs 18, 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. It says, And the righteous run into it and are safe. You see, you, you have to come to a place where you exalt his name. Yes. 
above anything and everything that you're facing, above anything and everything that you might be going through, you have to understand that his name is exalted. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. That word tower is, is a watchtower, meaning it's, it is, is a place of protection. It's a place of safety. It's a place where you keep, where, where you have, you have authority over your enemy. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe. The righteous run into it. The righteous run into it. Who are, who are the righteous? That's you and me, right? You and me. We have been declared righteous. You, we have been made righteous because we identified with the Savior. You're not made righteous based on what you've done in the natural, but you have been made righteous because you identified with the name. You identified with the name. When you identified with the name of Jesus and you identified with what, what Jesus did at Calvary for you, you were all of a sudden made righteous. And, and, and now that you're made righteous, you have the ability to run into a place where there's safety. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, there's a name that is a strong tower. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into it and are safe. See, there's a place in God that Satan can't go. There's a place in God that your enemy can't thrive. There's a place in God. See, we, we have the tendency to run to so many things for happiness. We have a, a, a tendency to run to so many things that, that may give us strength, that may give us value, give us significance. But the only thing that can give you true, lasting value and strengthen in your life is the name of the Lord. It's the name of the Lord. Declare that his name is exalted. Declare that his name is exalted. Now let's look at, uh, go to Exodus chapter 3. Because the writing is here and, you know, as I go through this, realize, as I'm reading the Old Testament, Romans chapter 15 says, the things that were written for our time, aforetime, before our time, were written for our learning. So it's not like all of a sudden, okay, let's throw out Genesis through Malachi because it's the Old Testament. No, he says the things beforehand were written for our learning that we might have confidence and hope in the scriptures, right? Yeah, right? So they're, they're written for our admonition. They're written for our encouragement. They're written for our strength, right? So let's look at this in Exodus chapter 3. Thank you, Father. Now remember, Isaiah... 11 going to 12 was all about just as, right, just as God delivered his people from Egypt, he was going to deliver you. That's right. Amen. Right? That's right. Amen. You see, when we talk about the name of God and we talk about the names of God, and we're going to get into a lot of these things about the different names of God and, and all, all sorts of stuff in this, because I believe that revelation is, I believe faith is built out of the word of God that builds revelation that causes manifestation. And so, and so here as your pastor, I want to build you up because a lot of times we can say, okay, well, in the name of Jesus, but you have no clue what you're saying. You have no idea the power and the authority that you have in that. Right? And so we're going to unpack a lot of these things through the coming weeks. But, but I want you to understand the nature of God never changes. His, his name, his, his nature never changes. So, so when we talk about the name of the Lord is a strong tower, then what does that mean? You see, when you identify, when, when we talk about a name, it's something you identify with. Yeah. Kermit? Yes, sir. See, you identified with that name, right? right. You identified that that was your name. That I, you know what? There was no other Kermits in the house. <laughs> You know, I mean, it was a, it was a, quite a few years ago, and 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 I had a note on my desk, and 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 it was for you had called the church and needed a phone call. You want you you were needing to talk about something, and and the person that took the note didn't. Really, they said his name was Hermit, <laughs> 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 and, 
And, and then I realized that when I said, is Hermit there? You know, and when it was an answer machine, and, and I was like, I'm so glad you weren't there, because I was like, is this Hermit? No. <laughs> anyway, it's a rabbit trail there. But anyway, you know, and so with the, with the name, you know, it's something you identify with. You know, my last name is Bridges, so that's, that, that is where I came from. That is my, that's part of my lineage, my heritage, you know, is Bridges, right? And so, and, and so, so it's what I identify with. And, and, and maybe, you know, if you're you know, chariots of light in the house, you chariots of light, right? Ever, stand up, chariots of light. Woo! Amen. You know, so, so yeah, they have, they have their meeting this week. You know, on Tuesday night and they, uh, Tuesday evening at Spring Creek, and this is Biker Weekend, and right now we have a group in, in Daytona, you know, uh, Winning Souls, and, you know, for the Biker Week. But see, they're part of Chariots of Light, and they have, they, have, they have a name on the back, and that's something they identify with, right? So, so when we talk about a name, it's something you're identifying with. So when we say the name of the Lord is a strong tower, all of a sudden, wait a minute, it's not just a name, but it's the name of the Lord. So I'm, I've got to identify with that name. And so when I say in the name of the Lord, all, all of a sudden now, when you have a name, if you can, you can add a title to it. Like, <clears throat> all right, my name is Justin, so I identify to that. But also I have other names like, like Pastor Justin, or I have Husband, or I have Father I have different titles that go along with that name. So when we talk about a name, yes, we have a name, but then all of a sudden there's different descriptions. And all of a sudden, you know, my wife could probably say, well, they ask you, well, what's Justin like? And, and hopefully she'd say some good things, <laughs> right? You'd say some good things, right? <laughs> and so, and because now there's qualities that are attached to that name. You know, I could, I could name all, all sorts of names in naturally, and, and I won't do it right now. And, and all of a sudden, if I clo- you had you close your eyes and I would say certain names, you would already have an idea of mistakes they made, bad choices they made, victories that took place, or all sorts of things, all based on what a name. Yeah. Yeah. So when we say the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it. The righteous run it. Those that identify and, and, and those that are righteous, those that have this identity of righteousness, they have a place where they go. Come on. Yeah, come on. They have a place where they go. So, that's, so, so look at this. And because the God's nature doesn't change. So let's look about his nature this morning as, as we lay the foundation for this series where we're going. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. And the Lord said, who said? I have surely, surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For what? I know their sorrows. I know their sorrows. Don't ever think that God doesn't know what you're going through. He knows exactly what you feel. Yeah, sometimes it it can be easy to put on a show in front of everyone else. Put a smile on your face, but yet be torn up on the inside. He goes, I know your sorrows. And what's the next statement? And he says, and I have come down. I have come down. I have come down. You see, he, he and, and just looking into thousands of years after this, how did he come down? Through Jesus. Yes. Got right in the middle of humanity's mess, brokenness, loss, right in the middle of the curse. And he came down to bring the blessing. I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land, a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Now see, I have come down to deliver them out of the Egyptians and what to bring them out into a land, unto a good land. 
So here, remember now, remember Isaiah 11 was, was talking about that just as he made a way out for the Egyptians, he's going to make a way out for you. I mean, there's no difference. And, and, and so Isaiah 12 goes in and is praising God. Why? He's my strength and my song. Man, just because he, just the way he delivered them out of, out of the Egyptian bondage, you know what? I can lift my hands because he's the same. He's my Lord Jehovah. The Lord will come down. The Lord will come down. The Lord will come down in my life. The, the presence of God will manifest in my life. So you have to take Christianity out of, and, and whatever religious background you might have, is you have to take it out of the context of a denomination, a religion, and you have to take it into a personal relationship with, with the Father. God wants you to have a personal relationship with him. It's not being, having a relationship with heritage of faith. It's not having a relationship with the Catholic Church. It's not having a relationship with a Baptist Church, with, a, with, 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 a, uh, with a whatever other church you might want to uh, label. It. It, it's about having a personal relationship with the Father, with the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. But all, if all you do is identify with, 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 with a denomination, a different religion, then the thing is, is you're never going to identify with who the Lord is. Yes, you come here to know him. You, you come here to know him. I want you to know him. I don't want you to know Justin. I don't want you to know a, just a set of rules to follow. I want you to know him. I want you to know his power personally. I want you to have testimonies of his healing in your body. I want you to have testimonies of prosperity in your life. I want you to have testimonies of deliverance in your life. Where you can make his name known to other people. You can make his nature known to other people. For the sake of time, let's go to verse 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, Look, when I come up unto the children of Israel and shall say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said to them, and said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shall you say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. What shall be his name? Meaning, this one that's going to come down and deliver you, what shall be his name? I am that I am. Or we could say, he is whatever you need him to be. That pertains to goodness. I am that I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What shall be his name? I am that I am. I am that I am. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Verse 15, and God said moreover unto Moses, thus shall you say to the children of Israel, the Lord your God, the Father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. Now, now what was the name? I am. Then he says, this is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. Now, see, if I just threw out this chapter, then I'd be like, I would have no revelation that he wants me to know him like they knew him. This name, I am, was for for a memorial for what? How many generations? Oh. And I love what Jesus said because, because Jesus was talking to a bunch of Pharisees and, and, and they were talking to him about different things and, and all of a sudden, and I believe it's John um, 8, 58 or 59, he says, and before, he said, before Abraham, he said, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. You see, you always have to look at the Old Testament always through the New Covenant perspective of Jesus. So the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it. 
See, if I look at this name and, and everything that pertains to this name, this name, bottom line, at the very beginning of dealing with this name was always about bringing people into a place of freedom. And that's the heart of the Father for you. So when, when, when our founding pastor says, this year is a year of marvels, wonders, right. and extraordinary manifestations, yeah. what is he saying? It's the I am wants to bring his marvels, his wonders, his extraordinary manifestations into our life right now, today. Why? Because he wants us to know his name, what? For all generations. I am. I am. I, I am, Vic. Let's look at um, Psalm 68. Psalm 68. Thank you, Father. Psalm 68, verse 4. I'm going to read this in the Amplified. Remember, he's our Lord Jehovah, and that Jehovah is basically I, I am, right? And he's my strength and he's my song. So he's the object of my praise. Verse four says in the Amplified, it says, sing to God, sing praises to his what? Amen. Cast up a highway for him who rides through the desert. His name is the Lord. Sing to God, sing praises to his name, cast up a highway for him. Now, when I very first started with, with Isaiah chapter 11 and that last verse, it says what he makes a highway. He said, there will be a highway, just like there was a highway out of, out for the Assyrians, there's going to be just the same way, there's going to be another highway. But here he says, sing to God, sing praise to him, cast up a highway for him. Who rides through the desert, his name is the Lord, be in high spirits and glory before him. He's a father to the fatherless. A judge and a protector of the widows is God in his holy habitation. God places the solitary in families and gives the desolate a home in which to dwell. He leads the prisoner out to prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a parched land. Oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness... The earth trembled. The heavens also poured down rain at the presence of God. Yonder Sinai quake at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Yeah. You see, when you choose to praise the name of the Lord, when you, when you choose to praise the name of the Lord, what are you doing? You're creating a highway for him to work in your life. When you praise the name, when you know that he's the deliverer, when you know he's the great I am, and you allow him to be the object of your praise, you create a highway for him to move in your life. You create a highway to lead you out from, he says what he, he takes, I love this, he says he takes the prisoner out to prosperity. But how is it going to happen when you praise the name of the Lord? When you praise his name. When you praise his name. I'm telling you, there is a deliverance in your praise. There is a deliverance in when, when you allow him to become the object of your praise. It says make mention of his name in Isaiah 12. Make mention of his name. Make mention of his name. Now, I didn't talk about that when I first read that scripture, but make mention of his name. That word make mention there means to recall and remember. So when it says make mention of it, hey, bring it up to your remembrance. Bring up your remembrance. Bring up remembrance. Yeah, remember about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Bring that up in your remembrance. And when you bring that up in your remembrance and you sing praises to the name, oh, he creates a highway. He creates a highway. Let's look at, um, thank you, Father. Let's go to Psalms 124. Thank you, Father. There is power in the name of Jesus. I can't quite sing like that, like Deborah and Cassie, but I wish I could. <laughs> now I'm going to read. I'm going to read this in the Amplified, and just now, just listen, because I want you to see that this year is going to be marked by great victories, right? Okay, and I, I want you to see that. I want you to see the heart of the Father in this, but also connected to our praise. 
Verse one says, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say. Now, see, we keep going back to Israel's perspective. If it had not been for the Lord that Israel now, now, now may say. What would Israel talk about? Their deliverance out of bondage. Their deliverance out of Egypt. Their deliverance out of being broken. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say. Verse 2, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us. Meaning there was people that came against us, us, but if it had not been for the Lord. I don't know about you, but I have, if it had not been for the Lord testimonies, right? Do you have any testimony? If it had not been for the Lord, right? Right. If it had not been for the Lord, if it had not been for the Lord, then it says, then they would have quickly swallowed us up. If it hadn't been for the Lord, they would have quickly swallowed us up alive when the wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters would have overwhelmed us and swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then the proud waters would have gone over us. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. I love this. We are like a bird escaped from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we have escaped. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Meaning the trap that was set, you escaped. Then it says, our help, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let's look at Psalms 118. Psalms 118. If it had not been for the Lord. I'm telling you, when you praise the name of the Lord... You create an atmosphere for victory in your life. See, you have to understand that victory starts in here first. Victory starts in here first. So often we want things to change around us when we realize that God's wanting to change us. Victory starts in here. So often we, we, we want circumstances to change, situations to change. We want to have peace in our lives. We want to have peace in our homes. We want to have peace in every area of our lives. But, and we're waiting for something out there to change when realizing the change needs to happen here first. See, the, the reason you don't have peace is because what you're continuing to identify with is because the other names you're identifying with. Relationships, substances, you know, money, whatever it might be, trying to identify with all these other things. But when you identify with the name of the Lord, it creates a highway to bring you to the places you truly desire to be. Verse 5 of 118 in the Amplified says, out of my dress, out of my dress, out of my distress. <laughs> Praise the Lord for that. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Just have Caitlyn Jenner know that. Um, Sorry, did I, did I say that out loud? Sorry. Sorry. Can you rewind that, please? Um, out of my distress, I called upon the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free in a large place. Out of my distress, I called upon the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is on my side and takes my part. He is among those who help me. Therefore shall I see my desires established upon those who hate me. It is better to put trust and take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust and take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations. See, see what are you putting your trust in? See, what, that's what he said. It's better to trust and take refuge in the Lord. Why? Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe. Verse nine, it is better to trust and take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations, surrounding tribes, come past me about. But in the name of the Lord, I shall cut them off. All nations come past me about, but what in the name of the Lord, I cut them off. You have to understand your praise is an offensive weapon towards your enemy. 
You'll praise, you'll praise is an offensive weapon to your enemy. And it says, when the enemy is surrounding me, it says, with my praise, I cut, in the name of the Lord, I cut them off. The next verse says, they compassed me about. Yes, they surrounded me on every side, but in the name of the Lord, I will cut them off. Verse 12, they swarmed me about like bees. They blazed up and extinguished like a fire of thorns. In the name of the Lord, I will cut them off. In the name of the Lord, I will cut them off. You, my adversary, you thrust sorely at me that I might fall, but the Lord help me. Verse 14, the Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strength, and he's the object of my praise. And because he's the object of my praise, he's become my victory. Your victory, your victory is found when you praise the name of the Lord. Your victory is found when you praise the name of the Lord. When you exalt his name and you run into his name, when you run into his his ability, you run into his strength, when you run into his, his throne, I'm telling you, he will strengthen you, he will empower you, he will equip you with peace, he will surround you with joy, he will comfort you. It's in the name of the Lord. It's in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Let's look at Hebrews and I'll close with this. Thank you, Father. In the name of the Lord. Don't become familiar with the name of Jesus. Don't become familiar with just God. Don't become familiar with God's house. Don't get familiar with prayer. Mm. So we've we've lost an honor to the house. We've lost an honor to the name. And these are some of the things that we're going to deal with because, because if you just say, oh, well, Jesus... What does that mean? Who is that to you? Is he just your scapegoat? Or is he your savior? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And praising his name is beyond just saying a few things. No, it's just a heart overflowing with you knowing who he is. And as your pastor, I want you to know him. I want you to know him. And these are some things that we're going to be dealing with in the weeks to come. Because I'm telling you, great victories. This year we marked by great victories. But I keep, I keep hearing in my heart, but I want them to know me. So often we want victories without knowing the victor. I want you to know him. I want to know him. Thank you, Father. Hebrews 13, uh, verse 6. It says, so we take comfort, in the Amplified I'm reading, it says, so we take comfort and are encouraged and confidently and boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Can you say that this morning? confidently and boldly say the Lord is my helper you know, Jesus Jesus said and in, in, in I read it after worship he said you know there, there'll come a time where you no longer you, you'll, you'll pray in my name and he said but I won't go to I won't have to go to the father because it'll be unnecessary why because my father loves you just like he loves me and then he goes and says in the world you'll have tribulation But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He goes, and he actually says, In me, in me, you'll have peace. In me, you'll have. 
See, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe. Yeah. Tell you, Jesus is... Thank you, Father. He's someone we rest in. We rest in Jesus. He says we're in him. He goes, you abide in me and my word abide in you. You shall ask what you will and be done by, from my, fa- by my father, which is, it's abiding in him. The, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it. Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for this body and I believe God, Jesus is the head of the church and, and so forth, but it's not just running to the church, but it's running to Jesus. Yeah. It's running to Jesus. It's running to Emmanuel, it's running to our healer, it's running to the provider, it's running to everything that he is. So we take comfort and encourage and confidently and boldly say, the Lord is my helper, I will not be seized with alarm. I will not fear or dread or be terrified. What can man do to me? Then he says, remember your leaders and superiors in authority, for it was they who brought to you the word of God. Amplified says, observe attentively and consider their manner of living, the outcome of their well-spent lives, and imitate their faith, their conviction that God exists and is the creator and the ruler of all things, the provider, the bestower of eternal salvation through Christ, and their learning of their entire human personality on God is absolute trust in confidence, what, in his power, wisdom, and goodness. Then right after that, he says, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is always the same yesterday, today, yes, and forever to the ages. What is this all based on? In 6, he says, so we take comfort and courage and conflict and boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Then the next verse says, remember the leaders, their superiors are over you, and pay attention to how they live their lives and imitate their faith. Do you think they had a, do you think the people in the old days, you think the early church had a revelation of who Jesus is? He says, pay attention to their faith, mimic their faith, walk after their faith. They just didn't run to a name, so to speak, but they ran to Jesus. They ran to the I am. And why? Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And verse nine says, don't be carried about by different and varied teachings. For it is good for the heart to be established, enabled, and strengthened by the means of grace, God's favor and spiritual blessings, and not be devoted to foolish rules which bring no spiritual benefit and profit to those who observe them. We have an altar. We have an altar. Thank you, Father. We have an altar from which those who serve and worship in the tabernacle have no right to eat. So now he's going back to Israel's day. And he says, we have an altar. We have an altar. Yeah, they had an altar back there and they couldn't eat. But you know what? We have an altar. We have a place to go. We have a place to go, Vic. We have a place to go, Patty. We have a place to go, Rachel. Rachel, we have a place to go. We have an altar. We have an altar. In verse 11, it says, for with the blood of animals... Is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest as a sacrifice for the sins. The victim's bodies are burned outside the limits of the camp. Therefore, Jesus also suffered and died outside the city's gate in order that he might purify and consecrate the people. Let's go to verse 15. Through him, through Jesus, therefore, let us constantly and all times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise which is the fruit of lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and what? Glorify his name. That glorify his name. I'm so grateful that we don't have to go to and burn. You didn't have to come and bring your, bring your goats this morning. You didn't have to come and bring your sheep this morning. I'm so grateful that we don't, we don't come to him with the, bull, the blood of bulls and goats anymore, but we have an altar. We have an altar that we can come to, and that altar is Jesus. Through him, 
Therefore, let us constantly at all times offer up to God sacrifices of praise, which is the fruit of our lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify his name. Thank you, Father. And glorify his name. And glorify his name. Another way we could say, we could say just what Isaiah 12 said. Make mention of his name and his deeds among the people that his name is exalted. Let's exalt his name. In 2019, let's make his name famous. Let's just make his name big. I want to make his name so big in you. I want you to make the reality of who God is so big on the inside of us. How, that, 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 <laughs> thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, that we praise your name. That we praise your name. Oh, that we understand what it means to praise your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Everyone stand to your feet. Worship team, you come. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord. There's something about when we praise his name. Thank you, Father. Praise his name. We praise his name. It says there's help in his name. It says in his name we cut the enemy off. It says the name of the Lord is a strong tower and we run into it. As we praise and glorify his name, the Lord brought this scripture in the Old Testament to my heart. And because that scripture in Hebrews says, talks about a sacrifice of thanksgiving. A sacrifice of praise, which is what? The fruit of our lips, meaning something's coming out of your mouth. But what's coming out of your mouth? Glorifying his name. Thank you, Father. In Isaiah, Exodus 20, verse 24, just this one verse, the Amplified says, an altar of earth you shall make to me. An altar, altar of earth. You know, what, what are you and I made of? We're made of earth. We were made out of the dust of the ground, right? Now, he, now hear this in, with, that in, in thought, with that thought in mind. An altar of earth you shall make to me and sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen. So grateful we don't need to do that anymore. Now, but get this. And then it says, in every place where I record my name and cause it to be remembered, I will come to you and bless you. He says, out of the, he goes, you, I want you to make an altar of earth for me. But you know what? You and I today, we are that altar of earth. In every place where I record my name, I cause it to be remembered I will come to you and bless you. Thank you, Father. Everywhere where I cord my name and place my name. You know, if you're a, you're a believer, he's placed his name on you. Yeah, I, I, have, I have the name Justin, but you know what? I am a Christian. I am a child of God. And says that when we bring our sacrifices and he records his name there, it says, I will come and I will bless you. So when you praise him in the midst of difficulties, when you choose to praise him in the midst of your bondage, in the midst of your addiction, in the midst of your, your purpose, purposelessness, in the midst of your hopelessness, when you choose to bring a sacrifice of praise, and you, do, you choose to praise his name. It says he will come in and he will bless you. When I believe when he blesses something, 
I believe it's blessed. <laughs> yes, yeah, one thing you and I can bless someone or be a blessing to, to, to something, but when he blesses, his blessing, his, like the, the blessing that was read in, in, in Psalm 68, he's a father to the fatherless. He brings the, the prisoner out to prosperity, all based on singing praises to his name. Oh, Father, we sing praises to your name this morning. We sing praises to your name this morning. Oh, Father, we sing praises to your name this morning. Oh, Father, I just thank you for peace in this house this morning. Oh, we sing praises to your name this morning. Oh, we sing praises to your name this morning. Some of you here this morning, you may have been, you know, it's just, I don't understand, Pastor, but yet there's something in you that's like, man, there's something in the presence here. I I sense something different here than I sense in other places. There's something I sense here different than places of worship I've gone to. There's something different here. And I kind of feel weird on the inside. I want you to know this morning, that is the presence of the Lord. You know what? And all you have to do is yield to it. All you have to yield, this is a safe place to yield to that presence. It's a safe place to yield to that presence. It's a safe place to lift your hands. It's a safe place to worship. It's a safe place. It's a safe place. Let him do a work in you. Just in our remaining time together this morning, let him do a work in you. As they sing that song and you're, you, you say, Pastor Justin, I, 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 I need a work done in me this morning. I, there's something in me that, that I need freedom from. I, you know what? I'm not going to place a label on it because I don't want people to have an idea of, uh, or you to even be afraid to come up. But, but I want you to know that, that God wants to meet you at this altar this morning. God wants to meet you at this place this morning. He, he wants to meet you in this place and he wants to come in. Let, let this place be a strong tower for you this morning. Let, let the name of the Lord is a strong tower tower this morning and so you make the decision to run into it you make the decision to run into it and and realize there's safety there there's peace there there's healing there there's rejoicing there there's deliverance there if that's you this morning just as they sing that come forward come forward don't hesitate don't hesitate this morning come forward this morning hallelujah thank you father thank you father and as you come praise him as you come praise his name as you come praise his name Break it! 
You know, I, I hear in my heart, there's a couple of people here this morning that there's some things that, you know, the, the Holy Spirit of the Lord is want, wanting you to walk in. Maybe it's a ministry. Maybe it's even just witness or sharing your faith with someone. But there's this fear that comes over you. Maybe it's even, even just getting plugged into a church. There's this fear, this, this thing of like, I, I don't want to get hurt. Or this feeling, like I don't want to be rejected. I don't want to, I, I don't want, I don't want, you know, to, to look weird. I don't want to. And, but there's like kind of this hurt and it's almost like you get so far and it's all of a sudden it's like, ah, you just kind of get to that wall. And, and if that's you, I, I just, I just c- come to the altar here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. sicknesses in your body. I want you to go over here to the right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, You will break barriers. You will break barriers. You will break barriers.
break every chain, break every praise you father oh we praise you father we praise you lord die, where would you spend eternity? Our salvation is not based in whether we were good people or not. Our salvation isn't based on how much money you gave to a church. Our salvation is solely based on Jesus and him alone. God doesn't send anyone to hell. Matter of fact, the word says that he made hell for Satan and his angels. Hell wasn't created for man. God doesn't send anyone to hell. He already made the sacrifice through Jesus. God, God's not gonna determine. The, the ter determination is your hand, name written in the Lamb's book of life. And if, if you, don't, you don't know that without a shadow of a doubt this morning that, 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 that Jesus died for you, that he, he went to hell for you, and that he was raised again for you, that you could be saved. It says if we confess with our mouth, we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth that he is Lord, it says we shall be saved. So your salvation is based solely in believing that Jesus died for you. Yes, good works are great. Those things are awesome, but it doesn't, it doesn't create your access into heaven. And if that's you this morning, I want you to come to the altar right now. You're this morning, you say, you know what? I want to know for a sure, surety this morning that, that if I die today, I would know where I would spend eternity. If that's you, just come to the altar real quick. I, I just don't want to take for granted that someone's here that, that, that wouldn't be ready to meet Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, we praise you for it, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Oh, we thank you for it. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. receive this word this morning. Well, give him a shout of praise. You receive this word. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You can be seated. Pastor Phil. Thank you, Father. Pastor Phil's coming up to receive our tithes and offerings. And man, I just, you know, he pastored, pastored for over 41 years. Amen. And I just, I just always want to honor you. Just thank you thank for you, serving the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. You. Gee, it seems like just yesterday we got started. You know, such an honor to receive the tithes and the offerings this morning. How many of you know that it's, uh, God has always, always made provision for everything in your life. It doesn't make any difference if for healing, it's for deliverance, for salvation, Holy Ghost baptism, for financial victory in life. He's made provision for it all. And so in the book of Malachi, you're, you're very familiar with it, chapter number three. But I want to give a scripture out of Matthew chapter number uh, five and verse 17. He said, think not that I am come to destroy the law and the prophets but I've come to fulfill. Jesus came and satisfied everything. We live underneath his grace. We live underneath his mercy. We do not live underneath the letter of the law. How many of you know Abraham came to Melchizedek and gave him a tenth of all that he had? But you know that was 500 years before the law was ever even implemented concerning tithing. 
So it's, it's not something that is a law that we follow. And many people get under bondage because they think, well, I've got to give a, a tenth of my income. Truth of the matter is, is you don't own any of it anyway. <laughs> he has given it all to you, either through your jobs or, you know, through other means and methods and everything else. Really, we brought nothing in and you absolutely take nothing out. And so it's an honor and a privilege. This is an honor thing that we, we do in accordance to what the will of the Lord has in his word. Children of Israel constantly, constantly were getting in trouble. Constantly. They were, they were either really serving God in hot and on fire, or they would end up being coming lackadaisical and just kind of skipping around and missing, but the Lord always had someone, a prophet, that would come along and he would begin to speak his word. And that's what Malachi did. He came and he spoke his word to the children of Israel. And I'm going to start at verse number eight. He says, will a man rob God? And when you stop, if you stop right there and you don't go any further, then you don't get the gist of everything that he's trying to do. He's trying to get something to them, not from them. And so he said, yet you have robbed me, but you say, wherein have we robbed thee? He said, in tithes and offerings. The offerings he was talking about were the uh, feast day offerings that they had began to neglect. And then he goes on, then he addresses, he says, you are cursed with a curse. How many of you know that if you, if you don't let the Lord lead your life, there's something else that's going to lead it. The negative is going to affect you if you don't operate in the positive. So he's, he's given us his word so that we would follow the instruction, the good instruction that will take us into prosperity in every area of our life, spirit, soul, and body. He said, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. And he says in that there may be meat in my house, that there might be provision. How many of you know you need provision in your life? Yes. How many of you know the Lord says that in order for you to get anything, you got to give something? Right. If you want love, so love. You want a friend, show yourself to be friendly. Right. It's a constant, we give something out. We're constantly sowing seed of some kind. Yes. How many of you want bitterness, resentment, hate? <laughs> no, you don't. So don't sow it. You don't want it, don't sow it. What a man soweth, that shall he also what? Reap. So if you want to be blessed, plant your seed. Tithing is an honor and a privilege to do. It's not a drudgery. It is something that God says, if you'll do this, then I promise you, I will multiply the seed that is sown. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. He will cause men to return it back into your bosom. And it doesn't make any difference in what area it is in your life. You want love, sow it. You want peace, sow it. You want a healing, sow it. Amen. We're breaking all the chains this morning. Breaking all the chains. This is the part that I really like. We drop down to verse number 11. He says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Listen, the days of you rebuking the devourer are over with. Jesus took care of that over 2,000 years ago. It was tacked to his cross. That meant that everything that in life that you need has already been satisfied, is fulfilled. He completed it all. Everything is complete in him. And so you and I have the privilege and the awesomeness to be able to say, okay, Lord, I don't have to do anything except just obey. Just obey. Obedience is a whole lot better than the sacrifice. And so we just give to the Lord because it's an honor to do so. What an honor and what a privilege to be able to plant our seed into a place that's feeding you the word of God. This house is a wonderful house that is sowing seed into your life. What an honor and what a privilege. I know that even though we've pastored for 41 years, Pastor Justin, 
you and your team are doing an excellent job here. Absolutely excellent. Amen. Pastor Jerry and our Dr. Jerry Savelle and Carolyn have been a tremendous inspiration and thank God for them to establish, to hear from heaven and establish this work so that you and I can plant seed to see to it that it expands. Listen, we're, we're right in the threshold, right at the very, very beginning uh, launching out of the vision of what's been set, stated for this house. The, the marvels, the wonders, the extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of our God, they're upon us. And the city is waiting outside to see what's going on. They're watching you. You may not think they're watching you, but they're watching you to see if it's really working, if it's really happening in your life. We need to believe that we're prosperous. Everything we put our hand to, God causes it to prosper. Not us. He causes it to prosper. And so this morning, we have the privilege to do so. There are several ways in which we can give. If you'll put that up online by texting or an envelope that you have here. And so we also have seed that we need to plant on our giving this morning. So if you will, go ahead and bring the scriptures up. Amen. Stand with me as we, as we quote the word here. Are you ready? Yes. Psalm 115, 12 and 14. The Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. The Lord shall increase you more and more. Therefore, because God has seen my sowing, his mind is on my continually. I am expecting more and more financial blessings and more and more financial increase in my life. Luke 6, 38. Give, it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Therefore, I am expecting a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over harvest for every seed that I have sown. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. He which sow bountifully shall reap bountifully. Therefore, I am entitled to and I'm expecting a bountiful harvest because I am a bountiful sower. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Therefore, I am expecting to have all sufficiency, more than enough, and be abounding in financial blessings, so that I am able to sow the yes, good work of which the Holy Spirit impresses upon me. Second Chronicles 20:20. 20, 20. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall you prosper. Therefore, since I do believe in the Lord, my God, and I believe what his prophet has spoken regarding 2019, being our year for the abundant harvest, I am expecting this each and every day throughout this year to come to me. In Jesus' name, so be it. Amen. You can be seated. Let's have the ushers come forward, if you would, please, and we'll watch the... Good morning, Heritage of Faith family. We trust that you are blessed and well. Here are a few highlights of what's going on here at Heritage. God designed us to live life together. Church is more than just a message. It's home. It's family. Our Thrive Groups were created to give you a place to find community and build relationships with those who will be there with us during the best of times and the worst, when we have questions and when we have answers. God never called us to live life on our own. Jump into a Thrive Group this month and find out for yourself the strength of community. Are you looking for a church to call home? Here at Heritage, our heart is to be the family and faith that God has created the church to be. If you'd like to join the family and become a member, our next Connect membership class will be held tonight beginning at 4 p.m. This is a great opportunity for you to learn more about our heritage, our hearts, 
and our future from Pastor Justin and Pastor Annette. Dinner and children's ministry will be provided. Register online at heritageoffaith.com forward slash events to share an evening with fellow members of our church body. Mark your calendar, come and connect. Our founding pastor, Dr. Savell, will be ministering Sunday, April 7th at 11 a.m. Come join us for a message of hope, a message of life, and a message of victory. If today is your first time visiting, we want to welcome you. Please take a moment to fill out the first time visitor card in the seat back in front of you and return it after service as you leave to our first time visitors lounge and pick up a free gift. If we can do anything to help you out, just let one of our amazing team members know. We're glad you chose Heritage this morning and we look forward to seeing you again. To know more on these events and others, visit us at heritageoffaith.com forward slash events. Amen. Just, just to add a little bit of a, add to that, Dr. Savall also be ministering on March 24th. So March 24th and April 7th, he'll be ministering. So make sure you make that note. He'll be doing the 11 o'clock service on those days. And also, if you've received one of these Connect cards when you came in and you're like, yes, I want to become a member. I want to know more about this church. Then there's a table out in the front that you can sign up. And we'd love to see tonight. Other than that, God bless. Have a great week.